Renovating a vintage Stuart 10H engine, part two. Making and fitting thicker steam chest gaskets causes a problem which will need some attention as the slide valve design is different to a modern 10H engine. On the screen at the moment, to the right, is the Stuart Score engine, which is two modern 10Hs side by side, and you can see how different it is to the one on the left, which is the old design of a 10H, which I think I prefer. I'll move the Score engine out of the way, and here you can see the vintage 10H engine actually running, and it runs very well as you can see. Even the governor rotates. The only real problem is it's a bit leaky around the steam chest and the steam inlet. Time I think to give this area a bit of attention. I'm removing the nuts that secure the steam chest cover to the steam chest. These are 7BA nuts on 7BA studs. They are very small and I'm trying very hard not to drop any of them on the floor. Just in case I always have my magnet on a stick close at hand. Here are the six 7BA nuts on the bench. The next part to remove is the pin that secures the eccentric rod into the valve fork, and this is very small. And you can see just how small some of these parts are when I put this nut on my fingertip. Here's the pin and nut assembly held between my very dirty fingers. Actually, it's not dirt, it's paint, mixed with black polyurethane mastic that I was using on the Land Rover which by the way is nearly finished, so after a while my hands should become cleaner. As you can see, all of the parts on this vintage 10H are very well made. This is the part that is moved when the governor spins fast, and the idea is, moving this lever closes a butterfly valve on the inlet to the steam chest. But there isn't a butterfly present, it's a dummy. Most of the time I find that governors on small engines like this one don't seem to work very well anyway. I removed the steam chest assembly, complete with all the parts attached to it, and now it's time to look at the valve. It looks very standard from this side. It's only when you turn it over you can see that the mechanism is entirely different from the current design of the smaller Stuart engine slide valves. What I'm about to do using some WD-40 is clean up the whetstone ready to work on the steam chest cover. I need to make sure that it's perfectly flat. Or at least that is the surface that mates with the steam chest itself. Look how much dirt and metal residue is on the cloth. It is important to keep whetstones clean. By doing this, the whetstone works much better. I moved the steam chest cover up and down the whetstone for quite a while in this pool of WD-40. I tried both sides, but the outer part wasn't really flat, so I didn't want to interfere with that. Instead, I decided for the outer part of the steam chest cover to just use this rotary abrasive wheel, which cleaned it up beautifully. The most important thing, though, is that the inside part of the steam chest cover is perfectly flat. As you can see from this image, this is the outer part, there is still some evidence of tool marks where the part was machined. It's time to make the gaskets, and I'm using a much thicker gasket material than I would normally use on a small engine. This is some stuff I get from a friend of mine who has a gasket company. These are just the offcuts from the larger gaskets that they manufacture. It's a very simple job, I've shown it many times before in these videos, and this method is no different. The only thing I had to do though was drill out the actual steam chest cover because it was a very tight fit on the studs. For this I'm using one of my rechargeable Proxon motor tools and I'm not making the holes much larger, just the next drill size up. This was a very simple job and although the piece of brass got quite hot, it was soon completed. I think it's about time that I got another piece of mahogany from the main workshop. This one's getting very holy. I held the steam chest cover over the gasket material and drilled through the holes. In this clip you can clearly see the thickness of the gasket. It should be fine, although I may need to modify the slide valve, we shall see. Here's the second gasket. I always cut out the centre of both gaskets in a steam chest, because I do not want any gasket material where it's not required in the centre of the steam chest cover. Because over time, 
Gasket material that is unsupported can get a bit soggy and fragment inside the steam chest. Here's the steam chest ready to be bolted in place. For this, because it's brass, I'm going to use some steel washers. And now it's top tip time. These washers are 7BA and they're very small and quite difficult to pick up from the box of 7BA parts. The job is made considerably easier by applying some saliva to your fingertip. This picks up the washers, sometimes three and four at a time. It works with small bolts too. Now the six washers are in place, as you can see, all I need to do is put the nuts on the studs and tighten them up. At this stage, I decided to trim at the edge of the gasket with a Stanley knife. I'm running the sequence at a higher speed, just to get through it. I put the nuts on the studs using my fingers and then use the socket, as you can see here, to tighten everything up. But to fully tighten them, I'm using a spanner. When working with very small parts, the usual warnings apply. Do not over tighten these parts. You need a sensitive but firm, delicate touch if there is such a thing. Here I've just refitted the eccentric rod to the valve fork pin and it's time for a test run. And there is an obvious problem with the slide valve. It can't move towards the port face and away from it because there's a hole drilled through it. This needs enlarging. It shows how good this engine is because most of the air is being blown straight to exhaust as the slide valve has been held off the port face just by the action of the slightly thicker gasket. This is no good, I will fix it in the next episode. That's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.